guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate you to the next level in your life. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Today is Mother's Day, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak a lot to the moms, but this message is for all of you. It's for the whosoever takes it. So I want you to open your Bibles already, and I want you to go to the Proverbs, Proverbs 31, verse 15. And we called it, She Rises. I'm just paraphrasing Proverbs 31, 15. But if you're here this morning and have, if you read, have you heard of the virtuous woman in the Bible? Say yes. Okay. And so have you read who she's supposed to be? Well, let me tell you something. As women, I don't know, I, I don't know about men, but women, we tend to compare ourselves with other people, with other women. And many times we don't feel, uh, we don't feel blessed. We don't feel like we have, we, have been, uh, we have been given a good life because we're comparing our marriages. We compare our families. We compare our children. We compare our income. We compare everything. And then by doing that, it steals the joy that God has given us. So I've always... Well, praise Jesus, now I'm, I'm, I'm more mature in Jesus, but I always tend to, to compare myself, right? But when I came to the Lord and I realized about this woman, when you read about the Proverbs 31 woman, I read it and then you're like, you read this woman, you're just like, who is she? Is she from planet earth? Right? Because you read it, that woman gets up super early, that woman, her husband calls her blessed. As a matter of fact, he goes into the square town and he screams her name, how blessed he is. Have you ever seen a man do that? <laughs> and then the children are going around town, we're blessed, we're blessed. I'm like, okay, I don't know this woman, but I don't know if I can be that. Then this woman not only does that, but she says that she wakes up early. We're going to take it from here. She arises while it's still yet night. Okay, and she wakes up and she cooks, she cleans. Oh, my, I'm like, that's too much. There was nothing that I can compare myself to that Proverbs 31 woman. But you know one thing that I have uh, come to find out as I've been uh, walking in my journey with Jesus is that that woman wasn't born overnight. And so when we read it, we think like, I don't have this, I don't have that, definitely I don't have this. No, that woman is a process. It's a process of you saying, you know, this is who I want to be. You don't have to be a mother. You have to be a woman. And this is who you are. And to me, when, when they say the virtuous woman, the virtuous woman, to me, someone that's super, like, submissive and quiet, and I'm not that. Right? So quiet, and I even picture it crocheting. <laughs> I don't even know how to crochet. And it's always doing recipes and from scratch and... I want to punch that woman, you know? <laughs> like, but that's not what it means. We take it literally. No, th that means this woman has learned her value in God. And as, as through the years, you know, I, I, I read it. I think it's one of my verses that I, I, have, I think I probably read, if not every day. I mean, the whole chapter. And one day I was super happy because I read that she brings her food from afar. I was like, that's me. I buy food and I set it. I bring it from afar. I don't cook it. So I'm becoming that woman. And I felt great about it. Literally. But in all joking aside, I want you to know that God wants you to arise. He says she rises while it's still yet dark. Still yet night. And it has nothing to do at what time of day you wake up. It has to do with can you get up? Can you arise in the midst of trials and tribulations? Can you arise and can you believe when nothing is working in your life and you're a woman of God and you're serving God? And have you ever been in a situation when you're like, you come to God, you, you've been believing God, and then you said, I want to be. I want to be like that mom. I want to do this. I want to be that kind of wife. I want to be that kind of mother. But then the more you pray, the more you do, nothing happens. As a matter of fact, things get worse. And I think many of us get, get stuck in that place because we want to see some light. 
I want to see some hope tangibly. I want to see some signs that something is changing, that God is listening to me. But see, that's not faith. Faith is calling those things that are not as though they are. So this woman and you and I are able to be that virtuous woman. I'll tell you why. Because virtuous doesn't mean quiet and submissive. No, virtuous mean, uh, means a woman of valor. It means a force. Literally, Hebrews translated, translates as a force on the earth. A force on this earth. So that means that you and I, if you're a woman sitting here today, that's who you are. He says you are a force to be reckoned. You are force and you can change, you can change things, you can use your words, you can use your mouth, you can prophesy, you can speak things and they shall change and will change. And we need to arise if it takes us a thousand times, it takes us repeating and standing year after year after year that God is going to do what he promised he's going to do. You and I already have the force inside of us to arise and to get up. You know, wouldn't it be awesome if our transformation in our bravery would just come and, you know, we get some, some fairy dust from heaven and we get in a line of prayer and people just sprinkle you and sprinkle you and then voila, you're super awesome. Voila, now I believe. No, that's not what it is. God wants you to know that he is with us. God wants you to know that, you know, we always talk about, I always like, my kids always says, we always talk about the promises of God. They're yes and amen. But think about it, the promises of God. Jesus said, in this world, you're going to have problems. That's a promise. In this world, he says, maybe you're going to encounter. No, he says, in this world, you will have trials and tribulations. But be a good cheer. Don't lose heart. Because I have overcome so you can overcome. I resurrected so you can get up, so you can speak to your tomb. And you can speak to that tomb and we can say, we can speak life to ourselves. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I, I share my, my darkest moment. That was in 1995. I've been saved for a while now. And I have had so many dark moments. And in those dark moments, there were many times that I forgot. It's almost like amnesia hit me. And I forgot what God has done. And there's moments in life because life gets so hard because things were not seeing any improvement. We lose sight of who we are. And then we, 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 we fall ourselves and we, we go into the floor and we cry and we, we fall and we cannot get up. I'm going to tell you that we are people that are able to fall and still get up. You can still get up. You can still believe. So if Jesus says that in this, in this life we're going to have trials and tribulations, and I don't know if you're a mom. If you're a mom this morning, I want you to raise your hand. Being a mother, it is the most rewarding thing, the biggest gift that God has given me, but it's been the hardest. Let's just be honest. Hardest why? Because the kids don't listen. No, no, no. It's not because of my kids. It's because of me. It's because of who do I identify. If my kids are going to trials, do I define myself with their troubles? Or do I define myself at the moment with me and my God? And many times in my trials and tribulations in my family, in my children and everything, I have not defined myself according to the word of God. You know, I have defined myself according to my situation. And so the problem is not the problem. The problem is how we view the problem. Right? But I want you to know that this message is a message for you to be reminded that wherever you are in life today, if it's good, awesome, continue, get going, get stronger. If it hasn't been that awesome, it's okay. You get up today and you take your position and you recognize yourself that you are a force on this earth. And that we're going to use our influence for greater things. You know, um, Paul, when, when I became a Christian, like my whole life, you saw, you heard a little bit of my, of my testimony. But when I became a Christian, I thought like, 
I'm sure the moment I give my life to Jesus, I shouldn't be able to go through anything. I mean, my, my, my life should be super easy. I thought you just wake up and you wake up, you know, I give my life to Jesus. And I thought like, hey, a button just went off and now I'm super nice. I love everybody. Right? I'm not afraid of anything. I thought that I was, I was exempted from trials and tribulations. That's what, that was my understanding because I didn't know much of the word of God. I'm like, when you come to God, if you're serving him, I shouldn't be able, I should have an easy life. And, I, and I, 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 my kids and I, I'm going to share this with you, my um, family, we have always for many years, my, actually my daughter was preaching this past Wednesday. If you were not here, you need to hear her message. I'm one proud mama. She did awesome. But she shares in, in the story is that as a family always said, we're, gonna, we're going to inc encourage ourselves. And we're going to say three words about our family. So we did it probably started 10 years ago, more than 10 years ago. And so we would sit at our table and we were like, okay, we will go to Alexis. Alexis, you are, let's say you're, you're brilliant. Or you're beautiful. And we would give different things, right? Isaac, you are funny and, and you're handsome because it was me telling him, right, that. Because he looks like me. <laughs> and then my husband, you're creative, you're a good dad. Da, da, da. And then when it came to me, they always gave me the same three words. The same three words. And it was, you're brave. You're courageous. And you're fearless. And that day, I liked them. The first time I heard them, I was like, yes, that's who I am. But the next week, they tell me the same thing. <laughs> and to this day, their words have not changed. And I would be upset. I used to be upset at them. I was like, let me give you a few descriptions of what I think who I am. <laughs> Beauty should be one. <laughs> Kindness. No, you didn't say that. But, but I wanted to, you know, I wanted to. And I was like so upset. But I never, I, what I realized now is that my kids, my family were prophesying over my life. They were prophesying over my life. Because... Since I can remember, I have always craved just the perfect atmosphere. I always craved a life without problems. I just want to be served. Wouldn't it be awesome that you wake up, someone serves you there, and then they put you in your shoes. What do you want to watch? They clean you. They take you shopping. You just get off. And then you go to church, and everybody's fun, and, and nobody is nasty in church. No, but... You get the point, right? <laughs> You're looking for something that is perfect. But I tell you what the Bible says. It says in 1 Peter 4, 12, it says, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. As though some strange thing happened to you. It says, Beloved. See, with love, they're telling you, see how God is. He's like, Beloved, my love, honey. Do not think it's strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. Do you know that whenever I have come and encounter a trial come my way, do you know that, I'm going to be honest with you, I always think it's strange. I always think it's strange. This shouldn't be happening to me. Why is it happening to me? He says, beloved, don't think it's strange. How about you? Do you think it's strange when you hit trials and tribulations? Do you think like, what is this? I'm an awesome person. This shouldn't be happening to me. See, we forget what the word of says, the word of God says, do not think it strange. That means the tri trials and tribulations are going to come to you whether you're a good person or a bad person. Trials are going to come to you whether you're just or unjust. Trials are going to come to you whether you're wicked or, or a saint. It doesn't matter. Trials are trials and they're here for all of us. So if you're trying to shelter your life, shelter your family, shelter whatever it is, and you're trying to protect it because you don't want trials. No, I'm going to try to keep my family as safe as I can. I'm going to tell you that you're living a lie. Because Jesus says that we're going to encounter trials. And then Peter told us not to count it, not to think it's strange. And I'm going to tell you what happened in 1990, in 1991. This is a good story. In 1991, eight scientists, this is a true story, eight scientists lived for two years in an artificial environment in Oracle, Arizona called Biosphere. 
Inside the three-acre closed system was a small ocean. Isn't it awesome? A rainforest, a desert, and a savanna grassland. The scientists produced every kind of weather patterns except wind. Eventually, the lack of wind caused the three the tree trunks to grow weak and bend over. It is the pressure of the wind that strengthens tree trunks and allows them to hold up their own weight. I mean, this is these are brilliant people. They created their own envi- environment. They create only they created their own biosphere. And I feel like that's how we are. I, that's who I've been many times. I'm going to create my own as- atmosphere, and I want it to look this way. I have everything that I need, right? And even they says that he created, they created every weather pattern. That means that there, were, there, were, there was rain. See, but they created it to the way that they like it. You know, it's funny. Uh, here in the States, uh, you have never encountered uh, a, a, a hurricane. But growing up in El Salvador, weather is different. Like all of a sudden, it could be sunny, you could be walking, and all of a sudden, the sky gets dark, and there is a hurricane happening in front of your eyes. And I don't know about you, but it doesn't feel good. Here, I love, here in the States, we get everything. They prep us for everything. Even when we have, have you ever got those notices? Yeah, your phone goes off and flash, uh, what is it called? They give you warnings. <laughs> it's coming. Careful. I've been here for, I don't know now how many years. I don't remember how long I've been here in this country. I have yet to see one. But I get every warning. <laughs> Where are they? You're like, I don't even see water. I don't even see flood. There's not even rain. But they're telling me it's coming. And see, that's what I like. I want, when traps come, I would, li- I would like God to send me an email and say, hey, this is coming. <laughs> Prepare. And I love it because they send you a warning, but I have never yet to experience any. But see, life is not like that. Life is just like when I was growing up. I remember this time there was, I, I, I used to be afraid of everything, mind you, right? And so all of a sudden, the weather changed. And I remember me walking around, and within minutes, within minutes, it was, it, the rain was so strong, the wind was pushing me, and I looked like this. I wish there would have been like a, a video or something, right? Because I was like, oh, it was like, it was taking me, like, and I was, no, no. And it was like, I was, I was fighting with the wind. And this is a true story. And I, I didn't look that pretty. I was crying, ah! Like, somebody saved me. It was really bad. And I couldn't breathe. Because the wind was so strong, I couldn't breathe. And see, that's what we need. We need trials in our lives. Because that, when the storm comes and it's blowing in your face and it's telling you, look, I am here to take you out. No, it's actually that wind and the storm is actually helping me to stay rooted and grounded in the place. So, you know what makes me sad? That to, to this day, people are looking to create their own biosphere. You know, we want our marriages, and I don't want my marriage has to be perfect. You can't have, I don't want any winds. And if I want rain, let me create the rain. <laughs> right? The ones that is like, you know when you can't sleep and you put those music and the, 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 the rain falling? You like even fall asleep. That's the way. If you God, if you're gonna send me a storm, that's what I want. Something that's gonna soothe me and put me to sleep. But see, that's not life. That's not life. Life is gonna come at you, and you're gonna encounter things that are gonna be really hard. And we cannot be afraid. We cannot shelter our lives because things are going to take place. But we need to know that God is with us. That we have what it takes to stand up, that we have what it takes to arise, that we have what it takes to change our situation with the Lord. We have what it takes. Say, I have what I take to succeed. We cannot be afraid. Think about it. 
There's people right now that they love Jesus. They love God, but they're not in church. I tell you why they're not in church. Because have you heard the term, there's too much drama there. Hello? Yeah. It's life. It's life. I'm sure there's drama in your marriage. There's drama in your work. There's drama is everywhere. Drama is for the whosoever. It's for the whosoever. It's the, the problem is not the drama. The problem is what are we going to do when we, get, we encounter drama? The problem is not the storm. The problem is what are the choices that I'm going to make during my storm? It's the choices that define us. It's not the storm that defines us, but it's the choices that define us. And so I'm here to tell you that do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Get in a church. Plant yourself. Be rooted. Be grounded. Knowing that the trials are producing great endurance. It's in our trials that we know our strength that we have. In good times, I don't know how good I am. I'm always, I'm always, the Bible says, like, the, the heart is very deceitful because I'm always thinking I'm doing pretty good. Until you hit a trial and tribulation. Paul said, Paul said, do not think it's strange when fiery trials come. See, it says fiery. It just didn't say when trials come, when problems come. It says a fiery trial. Do you know what that means? It means when you study that, it means it is a heat that is on. And he says the heat that is so strong is the same heat or temperature that is needed to purify gold. And when you're purifying gold, it has to go with this amount of heat. And he says that... To, to, for, for the gold to be able to be purified, it means it's going to be heated, I don't know how many times, to the point that everything that draws the crap of it, right? Can we say crap? We say crap. It's our family word. My husband says it, my kid says it, we say it. Right? It is what it is. Okay. The crap things, right? The, the, the awful things. So when, when this is boiling, everything that is impure will come to the will come to the top and when they're purifying the gold all they have to do is scoop it out put a little bit more heat until nothing until all the crappy things are removed and they said that they know that when the gold is pure is because they are able to look at the gold and it's able to reflect the person if you can see your reflection in the gold that's pure And you know what God told me? In our fiery trials, let me ask you something. In our fiery trials of our lives, has your heavenly father been able to see himself in you? Can your father, heavenly father, can I God said, you know when Virginia was going through this fiery trial, it was on, that he was on, there was a lot of crap inside of her. No, he wouldn't say that. But there was a lot of imperfections inside of her that needed to come out. But at the end, I was able to see me in her. Can I be honest with you? I don't think that I have. I don't think that my God has seen himself many times in my trials. No, because he doesn't want to. No, because we're not made in, into his image. That's not it. It's because we give up. It's because when it's dark, we get afraid. It's because sometimes we get tired of standing. But I'm going to tell you that God is, we have such a good God that he says that even when we fall, this is what he says. Micah 7, 8 says this. Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light to me. It doesn't say if I fall. It says when I fall. That means there will be times in your life that you will fall. That you will cave in. That you will say this is too much for me. 
But it says, hey, when you fall, you're able to get up. You have to say, I will arise. I will get up. And if you ever get into darkness, we as children of God, we're not to be afraid of darkness. Why? Because he is the light of our salvation. And I assure you, if, we, if I ask you right now, close your eyes and think of the darkest moment in your life right now that you have been through. But now I assure you that you're able to see that God was with you, that he sustained you. The reason you were living and we're breathing today is because he was there with me. And you know what the beauty of our God is that he doesn't get tired of being there for us. That he wants us to every time that we hit a bad place and this is where we're going to hit it. Yes, we're going to go from glory to glory, but we're going to hit some things in our lives, in our families, as a mother, as a wife, as a friend, as a co-worker, whatever, you name it. We are going to encounter things that are going to be so hard. But then you're reminded. Today you're reminded. It doesn't matter what, when you encounter those things. What it matters is the choices that you will make then. And he's telling you that you're able to arise. That you're able to get up. Another, my last scripture in Proverbs. Um, if you guys can put it for me. I think it was 25, verse 25. It says, she puts on strength and honor as if they, as if they were her clothes. She can laugh. At the days that are coming. Next. This is the same one but in a different uh, translation. Strength and dignity at her clothing. And her position is strong and secure. And she smiles at the future knowing that she and her family are prepared. It's time to get a new wardrobe. It says she closes herself. She chooses strength. She chooses honor. She chooses to believe God. We choose what we're going to wear. We're not going to wear our disappointments. We're not going to wear our disillusions. We're not going to wear that. No, God is saying, I want you to hey, do an exchange today. Get a new wardrobe. Take off those filthy rags that you've been carrying. Take off the pain. Take off the disappointment. Take off whatever we've been wearing. Put it off and put this one on. And then he wants us to smile. Do not lose your smile. That means trust that you and I can say. If you're in a really bad place right now, God wants you to say, picture yourself to put in strength on you. And smiling and smile beautiful, pretty like this. If you can, we, we just, you know, we practice. You know. I'm like, um, what's this guy? Nacho Libre, have you seen his smile? smile like that because your future is bright because you know that you're secure and then God has you God has you let me tell you this morning God has you he has you he has you he has you God has your family 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 God has your marriage God has your marriage God has your marriage God has your children he has you and because of that, we're able to get up. Because of that, we're able to arise. So don't let a fall take you out. Don't let darkness take you out. No, you get up. And in your darkness, you remember, God, you are my light. And he wants to see his image. He wants to see his face in you. He wants to be recognized in the midst of our pain. And he can exchange your pain. He can exchange your disappointments. And he can give you a new hope. And I, I can honestly say that because that's what he has done for me. That's what he will continually do for me. Because that's who he is. If today's message impacted you in any way and you would like to help us spread the gospel to others by giving a financial gift, please text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed as yours was today.